Hello, I'm Justine Willis-Toms. I'm hosting today Dr. Brant Courtright. He's the author of Neurogenesis Diet and Lifestyle, Upgrade Your Brain, Upgrade Your Life. Brent, welcome to the New Dimensions Cafe. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, it's been discovered that we can extend our brain health far beyond what was first realized maybe 25 years ago, that even into our 80s and our 90s, we can keep growing new brain cells. So let's talk about what enhances our brain health and what maybe diminishes it. So starting off with what is the foremost thing that you think we can do to enhance our brain health? Probably the most single most powerful thing we can do to increase our rate of neurogenesis and get our brain more alive is eating a healthy diet, giving the building blocks to a healthy brain, which means eating lots of good, healthy fats. You know, fats have been demonized for some time now, and it turns out that the high-carbohydrate high sugar diet that Americans have been told to eat is quite detrimental to the brain. Um, our rate of neurogenesis falls by 50% on a high sugar diet. High rates of carbohydrate, which convert to sugar, high amounts of sugar, and high amounts of unhealthy fat produce oxidation, inflammation, glycation, and a generally poor environment for brain health. So the brain goes downhill much, much faster when we are eating a high carbohydrate, um, high sugar diet. What we want is good healthy fats, meaning non-oxidized fats. So avocado, nuts, grass-fed meats, wild-caught fish, pasture-raised eggs and dairy. Um, good saturated fat is wonderful. Dietary cholesterol is wonderful, unless it's oxidized cholesterol. So, so oxidized... What, is, what does the oxidized mean? What yeah. is that? What? Why but, is that bad? I mean, uh, it sounds like, oh, we're, we don't want oxygen in our, <laughs> our bodies. Right, no. right. So oxidation means it's, it's rancid. It means it's been cooked too much. It means it's been exposed to too much oxygen, which happens when it's heated. And so when it's oxidized, oxidized fats... What they do is they oxidize the cholesterol in our bloodstream. And that causes damage to the inside of our blood vessels and to the inside of our brain. And it increases inflammation levels. And infl high inflammation levels decrease neurogenesis. It's toxic to the brain. Um, we want to have a low inflammatory diet, as much as an anti-inflammatory diet, if possible. And to stay away from like cooking with vegetable oils, for example, those oxidized very quickly. Nobody should be cooking with vegetable oils. Even though we've been told for 50 years that's all we should cook with, it turns out it's not true. Um, so I know that you mentioned in your book that coconut oil mm. is a good thing if, if you're going to cook with something that, it, that, that has a low rate of uh, even more than olive oil, I That's think right. you said. That's right. Um, you can cook at very high temperatures with coconut oil. It's a great thing to cook with. Yeah. Also, butter and ghee are fabulous for cooking with. Um, so like uh, the, the Tibetans or the people in India, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're on to something Exactly here. right. I don't know if this really is accurate, but can one thing about oxidation as kind of like adding rust Exactly. To our bodies. That's exactly right. Exactly when right. When something yes. oxidizes, yes. like a metal yes. oxidizes, it becomes rusty. Exactly. And that's what happens to the brain as well. When we eat oxidized fats, it oxidizes the cells in our system, including our brain cells. And that's the worst thing we want to have happen. Similarly, with a high blood sugar level, something like it's estimated that about 80% of the American public at this point 
is um, insulin resistant, meaning that because of the high sugar diet, the cells produce less insulin receptors. And so there's more sugar in the system and there's more insulin in the system, both of which are neurotoxic. We don't want that. Cognitive decline and insulin resistance go hand in hand. You can just chart them exactly. So as we get older, it's been said that if we all live long enough, we'll all become diabetic. But that's only on this high carbohydrate diet we've all been told because to eat. Because carbs then turn to sugar. They're, it's, yes. they're like eating pure sugar, actually, and in, in when they get metabolized That's in right. the body. That's right. So we want to lower our rate of carbohydrate intake so that our uh, body becomes less insulin resistant. So we begin to have a good insulin response once again. And then we can eat more of carbohydrate or even sugar occasionally. But Sugar is probably one of the most neurotoxic things we can eat on a regular basis. And you yeah. think about the average diet of the average kid. The average American child starts out with sugar-frosted flakes. and It's like it's just what is happening to the brains of children is terrible to think about. Exactly. I mean, I, I can remember... Uh, uh, when ding dongs and stuff came out and, and yeah. they appealed to kids and oh my goodness and someone said the shelf life of a ding dong you know might you know last <laughs> decades you know <laughs> decades so yeah. you wonder what all the, what are the preservatives in that and uh, but you know many of us as we get older one of the big fears that is prevalent is we fear dementia we fear alzheimer's we see that in the news everywhere and 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 like there are different organizations a few of them that are looking into alzheimer uh prevention but there's no magic pill yet and can you say something about that yeah um the american alzheimer's association on their website says that right now, one in three American seniors dies with either Alzheimer's or some other dementia. And that 42%, I believe, of people who are 85 have Alzheimer's. And pretty soon, it's going to be 50% of people who are 85 have Alzheimer's. So it is a huge problem. Since most of us are expected to live to be 85, we've got a 50-50 chance. So it is a huge problem. And right now, there is nothing that either slows the progression of it, or delays the onset of it, or helps heal it. There have been billions spent by the pharmaceutical industry, hundreds and hundreds of clinical trials. They have all resulted in complete and utter failure. Nothing has come from it. Zip. Absolutely no nothing. Hope. However, no hope. Oh, however there is now hope however. on the herd. Yes. Okay. So it turns out that the kind of holistic lifestyle in this book may be, at this point, um, the only documented way to prevent and actually even reverse the memory problems associated with Alzheimer's. So there have been two studies. You know, most research is funded by pharmaceutical companies or by researchers looking to discover the next new drug. There isn't a lot of money in holistic research because most of it's for free. Um, but there's a few places doing it. So the Buck Foundation here in Marin County has recently done a study where they did a simplified version of what is in this book, Body, Heart, Mind, Spirit. And they found that people who had memory loss, seniors who had had memory loss and had had to leave their jobs because of memory impairment, with this plan actually regained their memory enough to go back to their jobs and to be functioning fine cognitively for the two years that they followed them up on. So tell me now, now body, heart, mind, mind and spirit. spirit. So right. can you just kind of briefly outline each of those places and where we can enhance our brain good. health? Yeah, so we want a good diet. We want to have um, some exercise in our lives. We want to be exposed to new things in our life. We want to be learning new things, stimulating our mind. We want healthy relationships, loving, supportive relationships. And we want to get out of chronically stressful, scary, abusive relationships. And we want to be able to have a spiritual opening as well, spiritual practice, 
meditation, prayer, heart opening, mindfulness, all of these things together help the brain. Um, the other study that came out was a Finnish study that came out just a few months ago that was the first randomized controlled study of 1,200 adults showing that, again, with a simplified version of this holistic approach, those who were at risk for cognitive decline, 65 or older, postponed it for the two years that they did this study. So right now it looks like this kind of holistic approach is the only thing that will work in preventing Alzheimer's. So this is like, it, it can't be bottled, it can't be sold over the counter. Yes. This is like a whole attitude change about our lives because we're really looking at it like, what can we do? And if we, we're so dependent on, on the over-counter drugs, or the quick fix. So you're talking about moving ourselves into more aerobic exercising. You talk about having better sleep to mm -hmm. in, to, mm -hmm. to have that eight hours of sleep at night uh, and to lifelong learning to keep keep that up. Not just one little game That's that right. we play on the computer or not just a crossword puzzle or Sudoka or whatever, you know, it's something more than that. It's lifelong learning. Learn a language, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, in lots of different ways, stimulate your brain. Yeah, lots of different ways. Not travel. Ice of, travel. There you go. Go to Ireland and drive on the other side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> That'll stimulate your brain. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a really good one. I remember doing that one, and that really did something for my brain. So um, it all seems very cogent. It all seems very reasonable, and we just have to start doing it. And it, that might take some time to change our habits, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's right. We're settled in our ways, and to begin a new thing, it's like turning an ocean liner. It's like we start on a new course, and gradually there's more and more of a shift we begin to see as we move into a neuro-healthy lifestyle and away from a neurotoxic lifestyle. More and more we feel better, and we want to do the things that feel good. There's so much that is neurotoxic in our current world, so much that we just take in without knowing it was neurotoxic, that now science is showing us this is bad for the brain. So we all just kind of stumbled into this. It was all innocent. But now we begin to see that, oh, geez, some of this stuff is really bad for the brain. I need to stop doing this stuff. Otherwise, my brain is not going to function nearly as well as it could, and it's going to decline much faster than it needs to. And I know that you point out in the book that we are living longer and longer, so we want uh, our brain to be healthy throughout all those long years. That's right. That's right. We want to have a brain that goes along with our bodies. Yes. I'm, I want to thank you so much, Brant, for being with us today. Mm, and thank you for helping spread the word about neurogenesis. It's my pleasure. I've been speaking with Dr. Brant Courtright, and he's the author of The Neurogenesis Diet and Lifestyle, Upgrade Your Brain, Upgrade Your Life. And if you'd like to learn more about his work, you can go to his website, brantcourtright.com. Dot com, and he spells his name B R A N T C O R T R I G H T, brantcourtright.com. Or you can get there through the New Dimensions website, newdimensions.org. I'm Justine Willis Toms. I want to thank you for joining us at the New Dimensions Cafe and ask you please do join us again. You've been listening to the New Dimensions Cafe. This series of shorter interviews features many of the remarkable guests also featured on our internationally syndicated one-hour New Dimensions radio series. To access more than a thousand hours of programs, to subscribe to our newsletters, or to become a member, please visit us at newdimensions.org.